This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vector dropper icon using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and get started here in Inkscape. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So uh, the first thing we want to do in Inkscape is make sure the view is set to custom and then we'll zoom in at one to one. And then I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute menu with that button there. We're going to want Last Selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. So the first thing we're going to create is a, uh, an ellipse. So we'll grab the Circles and Ellipses tool and just click and drag on the canvas to create um, a wide, thin ellipse, maybe like that. And I'm going to take the opacity of that and bring that down in half. And I'll go back to the Select tool. And as you can see here, this is about 250 pixels wide by 73 pixels high. That's a pretty good uh, ratio right there. So uh, I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm going to turn, actually going to turn that red. And then I'll right-click that and go to Duplicate. And I'll turn that blue and hold Control on the keyboard and just click and drag that up a little bit, maybe about, maybe about that far. And this is going to make for the base of the dropper here, kind of like the part that screws into the bottle. That's what this part's going to be. So I'm going to move it up about that far. I'm going to uh, turn on the Snap to Cusp Nodes tool, and I'll grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, or we could just press B on the keyboard. And I'm going to snap the cursor onto this left edge of the red oval, click, and to this side, click again, and then over to this side, and then over to this side down here, and then back to the starting point. And I'll go back to the Select tool. I'll hold Shift and click on the red ellipse, and go to Path, Union. So the next thing I'm going to create is this little bit of a, this, this kind of like, I guess you can call it a reflection of light here at the top, just to accentuate the top of the uh, dropper here to make it appear more like what it's supposed to appear like. So uh, I'm going to take that, uh, that blue object right there, and I'll right click that and go to Duplicate, and I'll turn that green and hold Control and Shift and scale that in about that much. That's pretty good. Then I'll duplicate that again, but instead of right-clicking it, I'll just go to Control D on the keyboard to duplicate it, and I'll turn that one blue. Then I'll hold Control, and I'm going to take this bottom uh, right arrow and scale that in about that much. And then while still holding Control, I'll take this arrow up here, and pull that out, maybe about that much, and I'll pull this in a little more like that. And that's pretty good. And once we have it set somewhat like that, you can just hold Shift and click on the green shape and go to Path difference. So the next step is to create the top part, kind of like the squeeze uh, handle part of the dropper up here. So to do that, I'm going to grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to click and drag and create a rectangle going over the top of it like this. And I'm going to take this circle node here at the top and I'm just going to pull that all the way down as far as it'll let me go. And I'll go back to the select tool. I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard and click on the blue ellipse and make sure it's centered on the vertical axis and then click off it to deselect everything. So what we want to correct here is, uh, let me zoom in on this to show you. I'm going to press plus on the keyboard a couple of times. If you notice this, this, uh, this rectangle it starts to dip in before it reaches the blue ellipse. We don't want that because as you can see here, the blue, uh, the, the handle goes straight down. It doesn't dip in like that. So to fix that, I'm just going to hold control and click and drag this down until it goes into there like that. And uh, what I'll do now is I'm going to make this a little taller. So I'll go to Path, Object to Path to convert that to a path. We'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and I'm going to click and drag over these top three nodes and hold Control, pull them up about that much. And what I'll do now is I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. I'll go back to the Select tool. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create this little, uh, this little reflection of light shape right here. And to do that, um, I'm going to click on this uh, blue shape and I'll go to Path Linked Offset and I'll make that red and I'll take this little handle right here and just pull that out, pull that node out, maybe about that far. That's pretty good. I'm going to Path, Object to Path to finalize that. Go back over to the Select tool, click on this blue object here in the center, right click that, duplicate, turn that green hold control and click and drag this off to the right, maybe about that far, uh, maybe a little farther, that's pretty good. And I'll hold shift and click on the blue object behind it and go to path, difference. And I'm actually going to make that green. 
and I'm going to take this uh, red object right here and I'm going to make this uh, blue and then um, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit if you notice here the bottom of this blue object is dipping below this blue ellipse so to fix that I'm just going to grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool I'm just going to create a little rectangle going over the bottom of that make those corners sharp go back to the select tool hold shift click on this larger blue shape up here path difference. So that's that's fixed now. That's not dipping out of the outside of that blue ellipse. And once we've done that, uh, we could hold shift and click on the blue, uh, the blue ellipse. And by the way, if you'd like to zoom back out to 100%, you can just press 1 on the keyboard. So once we've done that, we have them both selected. We'll go to Path, Union. And uh, what I'll have to do now is fix this little shape right here. It has to stop right about there and not continue dipping in. So I'll go back to the Squares and Rectangles tool. I'm going to create a rectangle going over that. And just make sure you click on this button up here to make the corner sharp. We'll go back to the Select tool, hold Shift, click on the green object, and go to Path, Difference. And then finally, I want to make this object extend a little further down because if you notice here in the thumbnail, it goes down a little further. So uh, let me zoom back in on this by pressing plus on the keyboard a couple of times. Uh, and I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and I'll click on this green object. I'll click and drag over these bottom two nodes and hold Control and just click and drag them down to about there. Maybe about that far, that's pretty good. Go back to the Select tool and uh, let me press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100% see what we have to do next. The next step would be to uh, create this little white reflection shape right here. So I'm going to click on this blue ellipse and then hold Shift and click on the red shape and duplicate them both by hitting control D and then go to path difference and I'll turn that green and then I'll go to path inset and what that did was that made that shape a little smaller on the inside edges so I'm going to do that a few more times I'll go to path inset maybe one or two more times path inset uh, and that should be pretty good as it is and then finally, we grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool, click and drag to create a rectangle going over this left segment of that green shape. Go to the select tool, hold shift, click on the green object, and go to path, intersection. And we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Um, what I'll do now is I'll click on the, uh, the red shape, and then I'll hold shift and click on the blue shape, and unify them both together by going to path, union. And let me just make that blue for now so you can see it better. And we have the top part of the dropper set, so we have to create the bottom part now. So in order to do that, I'm going to create another rectangle. I'll go to the Squares and Rectangles tool, and I'll click and drag to create another long rectangle going maybe about this far, this far down. And I'll take this top node up here, and again, we're going to pull that all the way down. Go back to the Select tool. Uh, let me finalize that by going to path, object to path, and then hold shift and click on the blue object up top and just make sure it's centered on the vertical axis, like that. And we can click off of that to deselect everything. Uh, what we can do now is I'm going to click on this new blue shape that we just created. Let's just make this red to differentiate it from the top of the graphic. And I'll duplicate that by hitting control D, and I'll hold control and just click and drag this down to about here. And then again, I'll hold control and I'll take this bottom arrow and scale that in so it comes down to a uh, smaller tip at the bottom there. Make that a little smaller. As you see in the thumbnail, it's a smaller tip than the rest of the uh, dropper. And that's uh, pretty good. You can just eyeball it like that. And once you have it set in a good shape like that, you just hold shift and click on the larger red shape and go to Path, Union. So we have the shape of the bottom part of the dropper set, so we got to create this, uh, these, this padding going around the outside of it. So um, to do that, what I'm going to do is, um, first let's send this to the bottom, send it behind this blue and green part of the graphic here. Click on the button that says uh, lower selection to the bottom. And we'll go to path, link to offset, and I'll turn this uh, green. I'll take this node up here and I'll just pull that out about that much. That's pretty good. Maybe a little less. That's pretty good. We can finalize that by going to Path, Object to Path. And we'll do that one more time. We'll go to Path, Link to Offset. And we'll make this one blue. And I'll pull that out a little bit. 
maybe about the same width like that. That's pretty good. And again, we could finalize that by going to path, object to path. What we want to do now is let's grab the select tool. We want to make sure that this is not wider than the handle here at the tip. So otherwise it won't look right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and click on all three of these objects we just created. I'll hold shift. First I'll click on the green object and then the red object. And then I'll hold control and I'll take this bottom arrow and I'll just scale this in until this entire graphic, well this entire segment of the graphic is thinner than the top part of the dropper up here. And uh, that's, yeah I'd say that's about thinner now, that's pretty good. Maybe I'll just hold control and move this down a little more like that. And um, okay, so what we could do now is let's click off of that to deselect everything. Let's click on just the green object here and then hold shift and click on the blue object behind it and go to path difference. And what I'm going to do now is zoom in over this portion. So I'm going to press plus on the keyboard a few times. Grab the bezier pen, which is right here. Or you can just press B on the keyboard. And I'm going to start this point in this white space up here, maybe about that far, and click. And I'll bring this line down to about here in that white space, then click. And then press enter on the keyboard to create that line. And this is going to be the bottom part where there's uh, the appearance of liquid here in the bottom of the dropper. So uh, let me go back to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. I'm just going to click on, this no click on this line and pull it up like that to give it a curve. And I'll click on this node. I'll take this handle and pull that down a little bit just to accentuate the, uh, the curve a little bit. That's pretty good, something like that. What we want to do now is we'll go to the Select tool. We'll go to Path stroke to path and then hold shift and click on the red shape and go to path difference and then path break apart and then we can hold shift and click on this bottom portion of the red shape right here to deselect it so we should just have this top shape this top portion selected and with that selected we can just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that and what I'm going to do now here real quick is I'm just going to put some uh, circles in there to uh, you know make it look like bubbles little air bubbles. So we'll, we'll grab the circles and ellipses tool, hold control and shift and create a circle like that, perfectly round circle. Go back to the select tool. I'll duplicate that by hitting control D, put this over here, hold control and shift and scale that in to make that a little smaller, maybe about that much. And I'll duplicate that again by hitting control D and I'll put this one up here and I'll make this one even smaller by holding control and shift and just scaling that in like that. Maybe put these a little closer like that. That's pretty good. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll just hold shift and click on all three of those circles and unify them together by going to path, union, and then hold shift and click on the, uh, the red shape, the red object, and go to path, difference. And let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100% just so we can get a look of how it's coming along. So uh, we're almost there. Uh, we'll, all we have to do now is create the little um, these little units of measurement here. So what I'll do is I'll click off of that to deselect everything. And uh, I'm going to grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to snap the cursor onto this left, top left corner of the red object. I'm just going to click and drag to create a rectangle. Maybe about that big. That's pretty good. Make those corners sharp. And we could actually turn off the snap to cusp nodes now. That's just going to get in our way. So. Let me zoom back in on this again by pressing plus on the keyboard a few times. I'll go back to the select tool. We don't want that white space between the blue and red shape, so I'm going to hold control and just move that blue shape until it's going into the red shape like that. And uh, let me press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. So what I want to do now is click on this large blue shape here, that's the top of the dropper, and I'll duplicate that by hitting control D. Then I'll hold shift and click on this blue outline down here and go to path difference. And I'm going to click on that blue shape again, hit control D to duplicate that again, and hold shift and click on the blue, this blue line that we just created, and go to path, difference. And uh, the final step is to create the individual units of measurement. So to do that, um, the lines have to kind of like take the shape of the uh, vial here, which is it's kind of, it's supposed to be like a cylinder. So if you notice, these uh, lines have like slight curves to them. So in order to make those curves follow the shape of the dropper, what I'll do is I'll just use this object as a reference. I'll click on this blue object, right click that and go to duplicate, hold control and move this down to about here. Then I'll duplicate that again just by hitting control D and I'll make that green. 
And then I'll hold control and just click and drag it up about that much. That's pretty good. And then hold shift and click on the blue object beneath it and go to path difference. And we should have this little blue, this blue little crescent right here. Oops. And you know what we should do now? I'm noticing there's um, some fragmentation in there. So with that selected, I'm just going to go to path, break apart, and then I'll hold shift and click on that crescent to deselect it. And whatever is left selected, just press delete on the keyboard. If there's nothing left select selected for you, uh, even better. You're good to go. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hold control and move this up to the, towards the top like that. And we want to create four copies of this. So I'm going to hit control D to duplicate that. Hold control, move this down here. Hit control D to duplicate it again. Hold control, move it down there. Control D one more time to duplicate that again. Move that down there. And what we want to do now is hold shift and click on all four of those so we have them all selected. And we want to come down to the distribute panel over here and make sure that they're spaced out uh, evenly by clicking on the button that says make vertical gaps between objects equal. Click on that. And I'm just going to zoom in on this a little bit by pressing plus on the keyboard. I'm just going to hold control and move this up a little bit just to make sure that there's equal space between the red object and the blue object up here. And that's pretty good. We can leave that just how it is. And what we could do now is click off of that to deselect everything. And I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. And I'm going to create a rectangle starting out in this vertical blue line right here up towards the top. I'm just going to click and drag and create a rectangle like that. Maybe about that wide. Actually, no, we want this one to be a little smaller like that. we will go back to the select tool. We'll duplicate that by hitting control D. We'll make that one red. And then just take this arrow and pull this out about that much. And this will be the longer one. So what I want to do now is I want to take this red object that we just created. I want to duplicate that by hitting control D. And then hold shift and click on this top crescent up here. And go to path, intersection. And then we'll take this other red shape, this other red rectangle, hold shift, click on this uh, alternating crescent right here. Not the next one, but the one after that. And go to path, intersection. And we're going to do the same thing with this green object. We'll click the green object, <clears throat> right click that, go to duplicate, hold shift, click on this blue crescent right here, go to path, intersection. And finally, we could take this green object, hold shift, click on the uh, blue crescent, the final one, go to path, intersection. I'm going to press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Click off of it to deselect everything. We now have everything set. We just have to f you know, finish it and color it all in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this green object and hold shift and click on these other two green objects so we have them all selected and go to path, union. So they're all one object like that. And then I'll hold shift and click on the blue object beneath it and go to path, difference. And then I'll hold shift, click on this blue this blue outline and then this red object. Unify them all together by going to path union. And we could we could actually just click and drag over the entire thing now and go to path union. Bring the opacity all the way up. Make that whatever color you'd like. And we're now finished. We've created our uh, vector dropper icon using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.